The Mohammed Buhari administration can be credited with a number of policies and legal instruments perceived to be stifling the democratic space and capable of setting the various Nigerian groups at permanent loggerheads with one another. Apart from the hate speech and anti-social media bill, there is a potentially explosive water resources bill which failed to pass in the 8th Senate. It has been reintroduced in the House of Representatives. This time, the promoters of this bill are desperately violating the due process to ram it through. Meanwhile, the Niger Delta, the Pan Niger Delta Forum, Pandef, have criticized the federal government and the National Assembly over the reintroduction of the National Water Resources Bill 2020. They rejected by the 8th Assembly. Well, former governor and chairman of the Pan Niger Delta Forum, retired Air Commodore Idonga Sitankang, joins us now to talk some more on this particular water resources bill. Glad to have you uh, join us, uh, 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 Air Commodore, uh, former, of course, and Donga Sid Gang. Glad to have you join us. Thank you very much. Good. Let's start it this way. Why is this water resources bill evoking such emotions and resistance, especially uh, among people of the South? Well, I speak for the people of uh, the Niger Delta from uh, Pandev. And I, it, it has to, uh, because that's our livelihood. Uh, if we lost our oil, and now we lost our water, we wonder what else. So it, it is something that if you take water away, I mean, like up north, it won't be an issue. But here in the south, a lot of people basically live in water. So anything that has to do with water, whether it is surface or underground, must bring concern. And if it is adverse to their livelihood, then it's going to uh, be something that uh, will, people will get emotional about it. So that's, that's basically all, because that's our livelihood. It's, um, it's very worrying to see this play out, especially as this is something that did not pass in the 8th Senate, and it's now being reintroduced. But, sir, it's been argued by people that are against this, which is, of course, a majority. It's been argued that this is nothing but advocacy or could be nothing but advocacy and support for Ruga settlements and land grabbing. I'd like to get your thoughts on this. As a matter of fact, that is, the, that is in the, the cross of the entire matter. It was thrown out in the Eighth Assembly, and uh, we wondered why it was uh, brought back again. Uh, we have agencies that are res who have responsibility, but uh, water control of water in Nigeria, if it was such an emergency. So to put together another one, bring it even against uh, the, the way it should be done, because I believe if, you start, if land grabbing is part of it, as it might in, uh, eventually play out, even the past of the governors who the land is uh, that they're supposed to be responsible for where they're holding the land in trust for the people would not have uh, it would have been taken away from them, and that requires a, an amendment of the constitution. We are not even looking at things like that. So the the point here is, if you take the water, there's no way you'll take the water without the surrounding land, and this land. This water is not something that you say today it is uh, 10 square, square meters, tomorrow it will be 12, or at some, some point it will be 8. So as the, the land changes, who owns that land? So we believe that this is not really necessary as a matter of fact. It should be thrown out, as we have said, that as the Eighth Assembly did it. We believe there is something behind it more than what meets the eye. And I think for the sake of unity, for the sake of this country, for the sake of the people, whose land and livelihood is being uh, taken away, we should leave the, just let the, we don't fix something that is not broke. So I don't know why we are trying to do this. It's not necessary. Well, the argument by some is that the issue with scarcity of water, in spite of many rivers around the country, is that there's been no regulation concerning management of water. And this bill intends to address that. Isn't that something that, uh, all and sundry should, uh, you know, think no, what or think is, about. No, that is absolute. That is not correct. You do, because the scarcity of water somewhere in in, uh, in in Nigeria. Are we going to pump the water from the Atlantic Ocean to to the north? Is that what we want to do? If that is not the case, the control of the because the water that we are really talking about, yeah, control the water is basically in the south and maybe in the in the middle belt area. 
So are you going to get into the areas that don't have? We had tried to address the issue of desertification up north, planting trees, doing all those. There are other things, irrigation. But to now come and start controlling the stream in my village, just beside the Atlantic Ocean here, so that other people will have water somewhere else. We've lived this country, even, let's even look at it from the time of amalgamation, 100 years ago, or over 100 years ago, since 1914. Where have we, we've not, have we had any crisis with water that some people don't, don't feel? We have talked about if it is water so that we can have free, uh, so that people that hate men can now have access so that the, 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 the cattle can feed. We talked about ranching in 2014 during the national conference. Nobody's talking about that. If you have a ranch there, you can easily get all these things sorted out for them. So I don't know which water we are trying to address. It, it is not when you take away the water from the, the, the southern end here that you'll be able to give water in the northern end. I think the, the rest of the world might be laughing at us because this is not it. And it is not the matter of policy. We have enough. It, we, ha we have the irrigation policy, national irrigation policy. We have the national water policy. All those, we have even a ministry of, agri of water resources and all. They're already done, they've already sorted out policy issues. And it's, it's, more, it's, more, it's enough. To bring another one now, there must be something behind it, which I don't think we are ready to just live like that. What I do you think, think is behind think, it? <laughs> I mean, because what, what you keep saying you keep saying there must be something behind it. Is that not an assumption, really? What's behind it? What's behind it is the land grabbing, which uh, the Ruga. Ruga co Thank you, said. and that's what yeah. I was just about to come to again. Because that's if right. this bill, if this bill is passed, then under federal mandate, essentially herdsmen will be able to literally go in and take land and water resources in different areas, and that has a huge implication for security. What is your take on the implication that it has for security? I cannot agree more than, than that with you because if we don't, we need to control the herdsmen. Let's let's be very, let's call it a spade a spade. The way that we are having these uh, herdsmen running around and sometimes they talk about security matters, people are being killed, until federal government stamps, stamps its foot and says, let us go ranching. We are not the only people that have cattle in the world. Those that have more than what we have, they've been able to sort this out. They didn't have to grab uh, water and land from other places in order for that to happen. So let us be honest enough and say, look, let us go ranching so that they can feed their cattle. You don't have to be walking from Medugri to Lagos before you can feed your cattle. We have passed this pastoral uh, herdsmen, has, all this. We have passed that stage since. So the issue now is, in, remember when they called it Ruga? People revolted seriously. Now, if you take this, Federal government owns that water, as the, as the bill says, and of course the surrounding land. The people who are living there, that is their source of livelihood, what do you want them to do? How do they go about it? Will you take water from me that I've been fishing to give to the person who wants to give it to the cattle for the cattle rearing? Is that what we want to do? That will not be fair and that will not be right. All right. You were a former governor before. Uh... How does this conflict, or put in another way, do you think this bill conflicts with the constitutional powers of state governors to hold land, uh, resources in trust for the people of their states? Do you think so? It, it, it certainly does. It certainly does. Because that's what the Constitution says. The governors hold land in trust for the people. I'm sure if you remember, uh, there was the issue in Lagos some years ago, uh, 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 there's, there's, there's an area there as you are going into, in, into Lagos that there was this uh, uh, controversy, whether it was federal government that should own uh, the, the land there or Lagos State. And I think eventually it was resolved in favor of Lagos State because the Constitution itself requires that the governors hold land in trust. Even if federal government wants to do something, it is the governor that signs the CFO. If we don't change that, if we don't amend that, what we are doing is, in fact, un unconstitutional. And how do, you, how do you honestly see this all playing out, sir? I mean, now that this is back in front of the National Assembly, how, how do you really see it playing out? Do you see this water resources bill going through behind closed doors, or do you see us being able to actually scrap this once and for all? What's your take? What should concern us is whether, it's not whether it goes through or it doesn't go through. 
it is the way the people, because you cannot take away the people's will. It could go through and the people are not happy and it, is impract it will be impracticable to, to, to implement it. I think we should all have love for this country. Let people on all sides have love. If you have love for this country, you wouldn't want to ram it through the people's neck, whether they like it or not. That's not the point. You can go ahead. After all, if it was a military administration or a dictatorial administration, they could have gone ahead and signed a decree, and that would be it. But the people will be grumbling. All so right. Eventually, uh, all right. Uh, eventually, I, I, would, I would want uh, Nigerians to show love for this country and resolve this thing amicably and allow the people that are staying in these areas to make use of what God has given to them. Don't throw them out just for very selfish reasons. Well, one of the ways may be uh, to, what do you call it now, uh, representations, public hearing. Oh, well, there's none in this, but being able to talk to your representatives to do something about the bill, because if it gets to become law, nothing practically can be done about it. Thank you so much, uh, former governor and chairman of Pandev, retired air commodore, you don't guess it, Nkang.